Hi, so this is probably a very overdue video. Um, just wanted to give a little really basic demonstration of sectional matrix bands. And we're going to focus on the um, Torvium system, which is the one we mainly sell at uh, Incidental Limited. So hopefully we can show you a few of the advantages of the Torvium system. So the first thing I want to cover is, is why bother with sectional bands at all? You know, they're more fiddly, there's more stuff. So what is the point? What is the goal? So I've got a class two cavity that I've cut here. And just to emphasize the goal of, a, of any restoration is to, is to put back the form and function of the tooth that was broken down, okay? And what I want you to notice is that when you look at the teeth from the side, all of the teeth should curve and have a contact point or contact area that's sort of in the middle of the tooth. And then the tooth then curves back into the marginal ridge area. And that creates a really easy area to floss and clean. And it also means that the marginal ridge is very good at resisting fracture. Okay, so you're aiming for that contact point to be curved and low. Okay, so the problem with um, circum classic circumferential bands, and it could be any Sequibland, Toffelmeyer, anything really, is you can grab them like this and they're flat. And you can go ahead and just place that band over the tooth, I hope. Okay, and then I'm going to tighten it and we can wedge it. So these are just, uh, it could be any of these uh, the ones that could have a permanent retainer. This is one of those uh, disposable ones, um, but it could be any of them really. Um, and we can tighten that right up and wedge it. And then I want you to see what's happened to this band here is that it is flattened right out uh, at the contact point here um, where it's been tightened. And if you look at it from the side, okay, I'm just going to try and focus that a little bit better there. Can you see what's happened? Is the contact point that you're going to create is going to be much higher up and flat and much higher than you would probably really want. Okay. And this has a lot of problems. So if you finish your restoration here, um, what often happens is you adjust the occlusion. It's too high in this marginal ridge area because it should be back here somewhere and you polish out the contact point because it's so high up and then you haven't got a contact or leave it there and it's too high up and what can happen is you can get a fracture of the marginal ridge later on down the line because it's all unsupported because it's not got the curve to it you can't clean it very well see how difficult it is to get floss coming down because it's going to be slid right over and you get a dead space and you can get food backing below so these are all the problems with with using a circumferential band okay and they are the problems that we're overcoming with a sectional system and it's it's not so much an issue of separation so a lot of the sectional band kits i think all of them come with a ring and it's sort of like oh the ring is the reason that we use sectional bands to get extra separation and that's really not true oops is not me sand because what you could always do of course is take your toffelmeyer band and pop a a, a ring on there Okay, and there's no reason ever that you couldn't do that. The ring just creates more separation. So the ring isn't really the important part of a sectional matrix band kit. The important part is the contact profile and creating that lovely curve. So I'll just quickly introduce the Torvium bands. So we sell uh, the sectional bands, which are probably our most popular band. They come in the 100 kits like this. And in these kits, you get a small, medium and large bands, but you also get small, medium, large with a ledge. Um, so I'll just show you them because we've got a few questions about the ledges. But the idea of the ledge is that it helps you get to maybe a really deep subgingival area. So it's a medium band with a little ledge here and it would go that way down cervically. Um, I don't use these so much to be honest, but you can just cut them off um, if you're running out of bands. So you can they won't go to waste for sure. And occasionally they can be really helpful. So there's them. And... The 100 kit also comes with a standard ring at stainless steel and a delta ring, which I'll show you how to use in a bit. And the rings, we sell them in 35 micron or 50. Um, the, if you're using a stainless steel ring, uh, which come with Tor, I'd probably recommend the 35. If you want to use a stronger nickel titanium ring, I would go with a 50 micron. And we Tor do make some soft bands, but we don't sell them. I know we could order them in for you if you need them um, because we don't want to burnish bands. We want to keep nice hard ones. That's part of uh, how we, we recommend that they're used. So the 50 kit just comes with the same selection of uh, 
bands, but uh, just a standard ring. And then maybe the last set that's worth showing you is these lug matrix kits. Um, these only come in 35 micron now. Uh, Taurus stopped making the 50 micron. Um, and they are more similar in shape to the Paladent uh, or Triadent kits, which if you like, you might want to buy these instead. But they're still that same big seller of the Torbjörn, which is this hardened steel. So you feel any Torbjörn man, you know it is Torbjörn immediately because it's this really stiff, look like I'm squeezing it all over and it's just not buckling and deforming. Okay, um, and so, uh, and that's the real big advantage of them, of these hardened bands. So yeah, they, they come with a, a delta ring, uh, sorry, an MD ring in the kit, uh, which you can also buy separately because uh, it doesn't come in the standard, but this is a really helpful ring, which I'll show you um, later as well. Um, and, and the only th the other thing to say is please, please make sure that you buy official uh, Torbjörn rings from us or an uh, official distributor because the number of people that are buying these on eBay and they generally, uh, almost without exception, are fakes and they don't have any of the properties or qualities that you're looking for in a sectional band. Okay, so let's just come back to our class two and look at how we're going to use the Torbjörn band to restore it. So I'm going to use a medium band. Um, what people tend to do is use a perio probe to measure from the base of the cavity up and then they can use that to measure how big a band they need. They just want it to be about a mil to two mils above the marginal ridge. I tend to just eyeball it and maybe go with a medium and then work from there, maybe a greater curved band if I need it or, or a, a large or a small. Okay, so we want to place this band without deforming the matrix is the key to keep that contact profile. And a couple of ways you can do it, you either slide it from the uh, inside from the incisal edge down, or um, you can bring it in from the buckle, which can be helpful. So I just use tweezers to do this, if I'm honest. So I just come from the um, occlusal and roll it down, and I'm doing that without creating any deformation. And again, this is easy to do because we've got these lovely hardened steel bands. Look at that. It's gonna create that gorgeous anatomical profile. So you can go in that way, or um, sometimes this is easier, sometimes a bit more fiddly. You can come from the buckle in, and that can be a nice way of doing it without getting any deformation. Okay, once it's in place, you're going to do what we want to wedge it. And having tried everything, you know, we have we sell some plastic wedges, or you can get plastic wedges, but I like to use a wooden wedge um, almost all of the time, so I can place that and get a really nice firm wedge on it. Um, and, and and honestly, uh, it's much more environmentally friendly, and they much cheaper, and they and they work really well. So don't feel you have to use what's in the kits, we can mix and match. It's all about the principles of what we're trying to do with a sectional band. And again, let's just have a look at that. And can you see the difference from that to the um, the circumferential band we used earlier in that we've got that real nice curve going back on itself to the contact point at, of the, to the adjacent teeth in the middle of the contact area. Okay. So, so you know, when you look at that, that's got a really firm wooden wedge, which we know can create about 60 micron of separation. We've got a 35 micron band. There's no reason if we secured that well with some liquid dam or flowable that we couldn't just restore. So I'm quite a big fan of a ringless technique because it avoids the risk of getting band deformation. I don't want when I squeeze it with a ring for it to flatten out and lose contact profile. So the way you do this is with a liquid or liquid arm or flowable, you just pop some in these embrasure spaces to basically lock the band because what you don't want it to do is, is move when you're packing your composite and then you can cure that, okay, and that will hold it rock solid. So I've now cured that resin totally passively and I can pack really firmly, which is what you want to do when you do composite, I've sealed the cervical absolutely, I can pack against that um, to 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 um, do my composite, my restoration. So we don't always need a ring, okay? Um, although I appreciate that people like them and they create the separation. So I can just, when I finish the cavity at the end, this will just clip off. It's not been etched or ponded or anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you the, the three different uh, tour, tour rings and how we place them. So we're gonna start with the standard ring, which is just two prongs. So it looks really basic, but it's a really, actually really useful ring. Um, uh, and I'll show you how we place it. So we, we start from the mesial, open it nice and wide, and you do need to get some ring forceps to place any of the rings, I would say. Um, it's much safer 
um, and you can get them from the, the site. So that is one thing you do need is some, some ring forceps. You don't need too many things. But you're going to run it up, bring it from the mesial, and you're going to bring it in. Okay, and I like to place it here. So I like to place it um, away from the cavity, outside the wedge, and then place it. And what that's going to do is squeeze the wedge into the band and help seal cervically and stop it from coming out. And the good thing about these wedges is they put all the pressure around the wedge area rather than kind of at the top here. And that means it's much less likely to deform the band. So they still have a massive place, these, uh, these rings, um, and they can be very useful. Downside is sometimes they're a little bit unstable in the mouth, and um, then maybe they, they be, if, they're, if they're not sitting properly or moving, then you might have to use another one. And that, that goes for all rings. You, you, the right ring is the one that's sitting correctly without deforming the band. And in different scenarios, that will be um, a different ring. The next ring we're going to try is this delta ring. So you can use them without any inserts. So you bring them again from the mesial, slide them in, maybe just steady the band a little bit with your fingers, and you can come and sit over the wedge. Okay, so they're designed to come over the wedge. Okay, um, and sit like that. Put that into focus. Okay. Um, so you can use them like that, but they are also very helpful in that you can put these little rubber inserts on the one, and there's two different types, the green and the blue. Okay, and the, the blue are a little bit wider for the embrasure than the green, and they've got a very definite side to them, so you, you want to be putting them on um, with the V going down, because that's supposed to sit over the wedge. So um, here's a one with the blue installed, and you can mix them up. You could have green on one side and blue on the other, depending on the embrasures. So I'll just install the green ones for you. And what we're going to do here is just open the ring up slightly, grab that uh, insert, making sure that the V is going towards the wedge cervically, and slide it on. And then I'm going to grab the other side. Okay, so they're really easy to install. These are disposable uh, for use. So that's uh, that's the green inserts on, which is a better for this uh, Prosecco. I'm going to open it up nice and wide, start from the mesial, pinch the band, come in, and I'm trying to seat it over the wedge. Okay. But the nice thing about these little rubber uh, feet is that it's quite grippy and it'll help the, um, the ring stay in position and squeeze and kind of model um, if, if it's a small tooth or unfavorable. Um, so they are quite helpful for stopping them sliding off. So that's two rings, and the last ring I will show you is this MD ring, which I think, I, I'm starting to really like this ring, I think it's great. It's got a nice big wide V on it. Again, it's one that's designed to sit over the wedge, um, and I think this is a good one for beginners, so it's a bit of a shame it's not in those starter packs, but very nice ring. Come from the mesial again, pinch the, um, the band, and come sit over. And I should say that always the ring is designed uh, to come out uh, on the on the mesial side so that's there sat over the wedge just show you that so yeah really nice easy band to place um stainless steel so it won't give you quite as much separation as a nickel titanium ring um or, or last as long but they're an awful lot cheaper um and to be fair they really last well as well to be honest I've been using these quite a lot but a lot of people really like the Paladant or the Garrison uh, rings. And I always say, you know, whichever ring you like, whichever ring fits, is the, is the right one. Um, don't feel you have to use all of the kit that comes with the ring, you know. Um, the Paladant, you could use a wooden wedge. Why not? You know, you don't have to use the, 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 the wave wedge and you don't have to use the, the, the band. So you can mix and match and try the hardened steel Tovian ones. Grab your Paladant band, come in again from the mesial and seat over. So these are a nice ring, um, and because they're nickel titanium, they will create even more separation, which can be great, but they can also, because they're so strong, they can create more deformation and flattening of the band. So for nickel titanium bands like this, or the Garrison, I generally will recommend you go with a 50 micron um, 12 m matrix rather than a um, rather than a 35. Just pop that off. Um, we're going to do the same thing with one of these original Garrison ones, which a really strong um, ring. I find them a little bit too strong, but I know a lot of people like them. Um, and they, they will, again, can be used, and I'll use them definitely with a 50 micron. That band's had about 100 rings, some very strong ones put on it. I'm just going to grab it out, and you can see it's still in good nick um, and not deformed. So they are incredibly durable, um, these, these 12 bands. So I hope that's been yeah, useful.
a few tips and just like a really basic overview.